uh, President Marcos, how are you doing? <laughs> just, just about managing. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, President Marcos, you cited in your speech earlier the need to go beyond declaring respect and support for UNCLOS and to see an effective application of the UNCLOS to address maritime disputes. Mm. And we all know that this includes the South China Sea Rao. What concrete measures can the ASEAN and the EU undertake to ensure the rule of law in disputed areas beyond the usual strongly worded statements? Well, this is, uh, this is one of the reasons that we have, this, uh, we have these conferences, is to map out any possible uh, actions that might be jointly taken, because if, if every action that might be taken that uh, objects or uh, uh, brings, a, uh, brings a light to a possible violation of the UNCLOS is much stronger when it is brought about by a group of nations such as ASEAN and if the EU now with our strategic partnership is able to also join their voices to that, then that will be much stronger in the terms of actually being able to enforce what UNCLOS is, uh, uh, is all about. Uh, their commitment by the, the EU's commitment, which is, which is found in the joint declaration, the EU's commitment to uh, the, even the doctrine of, uh, of um, uh, the DOC, the doctrine of behaviors in the South China Sea, is already a very, very big, uh, very, very big step for us in the Philippines, for example, and for all the countries around the South China Sea, uh, that we now have the support, a strategic support from not only the member countries of EU, but of EU itself. Now, because it EU and ASEAN together comprise the largest, most well-organized regional aggrupations, then that will be a very, very strong, that will be a very, very strong position to be able to negotiate even individually for the Philippines or jointly with ASEAN or even with the EU as uh, perhaps as, uh, as uh, uh, a third party uh, to, for us to take action and to negotiate further uh, these uh, difficulties that we are all having to face uh, with the problems uh, in terms of territoriality in the South China Sea. Thank you. Yeah. We have a, another question. Rosie uh, Birchard, yes, from Channel News Asia, please. Thank you very much, Rosie Birchard, reporting for Channel News Asia, CNA. Uh, to President Marcos and Prime Minister Hun Sen, uh, the EU has announced this 10 billion euros of infrastructure investments. Now, that is just a, a drop in the ocean, really, when you compare it to what the Asian Development Bank estimates is needed in terms of investment to keep up levels of growth in ASEAN. What would you have liked to see? Would you like to see more? Can you give us some insights into that? And to, the, uh, to Presidents Michel and, uh, and von der Leyen, we heard a lot about a potential block-to-block -block free trade agreement there. Now, I believe that's still pretty far off. What, would, what are the biggest barriers in your eyes? Is it Myanmar? Is it about climate policies from the ASEAN side? What do you think needs to happen to be able to get there? Thank you very much. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think the, 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 the one who can best answer that will be the, uh, the uh, donor of the 10 billion, uh, 10 billion euro. And we would like to ask them how they would want us to, uh, to use their hard-earned money when it comes to, uh, to ASEAN. So perhaps uh, President Michel. No, maybe, maybe I will try to, to answer both questions. First of all, we are absolutely determined to, uh, to um, upgrade the level of our ambition in terms of a strategic partnership with the ASEAN countries. It's very clear. And um, it's also very important to take into account the fact that the EU is mobilizing money in order to make very tangible the bilateral partnerships we have with each of the ASEAN, uh, the members of this ASEAN um, uh, organization, each of the ASEAN uh, countries. And this is an important signal that we want to send uh, to, to, the, to the leaders, but also to the people uh, in that region. Po point one. Maybe with a smile, uh, another information that I had the occasion to share yesterday with some of the ASEAN colleagues. Sometimes it could happen. We have some difficulties within uh, the EU uh, to be on the same page. Sometimes we have divisions, we have difficult questions, we have difficult topics. But one thing is absolutely certain. When we have on the agenda of the European Council 
reveal our relationship with ASEAN spontaneously, immediately, the 27 member states, we are all on the same page. We are absolutely motivated to strengthen the ties. We have exactly the same assessment. We think this is uh, a strategic uh, importance for all of us to, to develop and to make more tangible uh, this uh, partnership with uh, that region. And this is uh, a, a transition to the second part of your question, the trade agreements. You know, this is a, a general debate across the EU. Uh, we believe in the free trade. We believe in the globalization, but we think at the same time that we need to work for more common standards, more similar uh, standards, you know, to take more into account uh, our common goals in terms of climate change, for instance, in terms of labor conditions, uh, for instance. And it's very good that uh, we have demonstrated that it's possible with some of the countries of ASEAN to have free trade agreements, and we can observe that this is uh, very positive on both sides. Uh, it, uh, it's delivering concrete and tangible results in terms of increase of the volume of the economic exchanges uh, between those countries and the EU. And uh, this was told by the President of the Commission. It's not a secret that we have also exploratory tools, exploratory tools with some other uh, uh, ASEAN countries in order to identify how we can try to make some progress and maybe to launch negotiations in the following months or in the, ne the near future. And there is another dream we have. We have the dream to make possible, sooner or later, uh, uh, EU ASEAN free trade agreement. But of course, in you know, order to make it happen, it's also important that uh, within the ASEAN, steps are made in terms of uh, economic integration. It's not exactly the same situation in each uh, of those countries. And it's probably also an, an, an encouragement with respect for the ASEAN countries uh, to, uh, to, to, to observe uh, some, uh, some, uh, some progress in terms of economic uh, integration. You can see that we are really motivated. We are very proud because this statement to Today, uh, it's a very strong message. Uh, it's a strong impetus uh, for the for the future. There are concrete projects uh, on the table, and we are we are very optimistic and confident that on a regular basis we'll have the occasion uh, to meet at the leaders' level in order to assess what we did and what we need to do in order to make sure that uh, we are we are implementing what we have decided. If I might just uh, add something, uh, it is remarkable actually to see uh, during our meetings how uh, despite the marked difference, differences between EU member states and ASEAN member states that it is remarkable that we identify as the same, we identify the same priorities as uh, EU together as, as ASEAN does as uh, the EU seems to also have the same priorities and those are the, in the areas that we spoke about environmental protection, sustainable economic development, combating climate change, connectivity, cybersecurity, digital transition, migration, gender justice. So it is, uh, as I said, it, just is, it is just an indication and a manifestation of how global we have actually become. And although we come from very different places, from different, very different conditions, uh, we have a same, a very similar view, a sem very similar world view of the challenges that we all face. Thank you very much. Finbar Birmingham with the Hong Kong newspaper, the South China Morning Post. Uh, a lot of talk about the, um, the things that you have in common, but just reading the, uh, the joint statement, um, there certainly are some differences, particularly on Ukraine, where it says most members strongly condemn the war in Ukraine and stress it is causing immense human suffering. Um, to, the, uh, to, to Prime Minister Hun Sen, President Marcos, uh, could you explain why it isn't all members that are condemning the war? In Ukraine, uh, just a follow-up question, um, ASEAN is often portrayed as a, a swing state between the big powers of the United States, China and Europe. Um, I'm wondering from uh, your, both of your perspectives whether you uh, welcome the European Union to compete with uh, the United States and China or whether indeed you, you do see it in that way. Thank you very much. Uh, in the about the competition between the United States and China um, and if it's that what we want. Believe me, we would rather not have these tensions in our part of the world. That is the last thing that we would like. And we, the Philippines, for, for, for our part, have sta has taken an independent policy, and we absolutely refuse to go back to the situation of the Cold War where we have to pick sides in terms of who the superpower is that we are aligned with. 
uh, what uh, we what we say is that, uh, to be put it very simply, is that uh, in the Philippines our foreign policy is the policy for peace and for the national interest. So foreign policy will always be guided by a commitment to peace and the pursuit of the national interest. 